This video covers uh, section 4.1 of chapter 4 called Roots of Polynomials um, from the Core 1 book and we start with the roots of a quadratic. We'll be looking at the roots of quadratics, cubics, quartics and there are certain rules that we have about the roots of these different types of polynomials. So remember polynomial just means that it is uh, an expression or uh, an equation that has uh, powers of x. Yes, yeah, so it might be x squared, x cubed, x to the power of 4, x to the power of 5, and so on. And these, we always find that the roots can be expressed in terms of the coefficients of the original polynomial. Okay, now what do I mean by the coefficients of the polynomial? What I mean is the numbers that you get in front of x squared, the b, and the number here. Okay, so these are called coefficients. So the coefficient of the x squared term is a coefficient of x squared term in this case is a the coefficient of the x term in this case is b now these numbers could be positive or negative and you could say that c is actually the coefficient of the x to the power zero term yeah coefficient of x to the power zero term is C, it's that number that floats around on its own. And these are linked to the roots of a polynomial. So let's say that the roots of this polynomial or this quadratic, so this could be any quadratic, um, are, and we're going to call them alpha and beta. Yeah, so we're just going to use the first two letters of the Greek alphabet, lowercase. And let's say that that's what the roots are. So, you know, they could be any number. The roots might be five and negative two, any two roots. What we find is, is that the sum of the roots, sum of roots, in other words, alpha plus beta, is always equal to negative b over a. Now, b over a, those things come from here. Yeah, so we can look at the coefficients and use those to work out what the sum of the roots are, what the roots add up to. So if b was 5 and a was 2, then um, negative 5 over 2 would be what the roots add up to. And the product of the roots, product of roots, so the product of the roots is alpha times beta is always equal to c over a. So that's the number floating around at the end over a now these could be positive or negative you just need to watch out for um where a coefficient is negative and you've got this negative here so just watch out for that and all we're doing basically is just doing a bit of algebra just manipulating these numbers to find the sum or the product of the roots so here we've got the roots of uh, or quadratic uh, equation which is 2x squared minus 5x minus 4 equals 0 to so alpha and beta. Without solving the equation, what do we need to do? We want to find the sum of the roots, the product of the roots, then we're adding the reciprocals together, and then we're going to work out uh, alpha squared plus beta squared. And we can do all of this without actually having to solve the quadratic. Now, the first thing that I would do is write down what the values of a are. So a is 2, b is negative 5 and c is negative 4. So we'll write those down straight away and we're going to use those to help us answer the question. Right, so part a, alpha plus beta or beta. Right, that's negative b over a. So that's negative negative 5 over 2. So that's going to be 5 over 2. Now I would leave it like that. I wouldn't change it to a um, a decimal or anything like that. Leave it as an improper fraction, that's absolutely fine. 
b alpha times beta so the, the product of the roots well we know that's c over a so that's going to be negative 4 over 2 so that just simplifies to negative 2 for part c we want to find 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta now we don't have a rule for this but what i can do if i times the first fraction top and bottom by beta and the second fraction top and bottom by alpha what i get is this i will get basically i want to try and add those fractions together by giving them the same denominator so i'd have beta over alpha beta plus alpha over alpha beta so i've just given them the same denominator if i put those together what do i get alpha plus beta over alpha times beta you see what i've done there i've turned it into basically one of these that's the method that we use yeah so we're not going to try and scramble around and work out you know what's going on uh, you know we basically just turn it into an equivalent that involves alpha b alpha plus beta or alpha times beta so we've already worked out alpha plus beta that's 5 over 2 so you've got 5 over 2 and we've already worked out alpha times beta so that's negative 2 so that's 5 over 2 divided by negative 2 which is going to give us negative 5 over 4 and the last one d i've got alpha squared plus beta squared or beta squared now with all of these we need to try and find a way to turn it into alpha plus beta um, or alpha times beta now what we can do on this actually is complete the square it's not the difference of two squares or anything like that completing the square is really useful for questions like this so if i had um, alpha plus beta all squared and i'm minus two alpha beta what you'll see i get that will actually be alpha squared plus beta squared let's multiply it out and see what we get this is just a this is a useful result to remember so if i multiply this out so alpha a alpha plus beta times by alpha plus beta and minus two alpha beta let's see what we get this is a useful result knowing the sum of two squares so this will give me alpha squared plus two lots of alpha beta plus beta squared and i'm taking away two alpha beta can you see how that works so actually what's going to happen that and that cancel out just leaving me with alpha squared plus beta squared so that's a useful result to remember actually so i'll write that over at the top here that you could almost like say alpha a squared plus b squared is equal to a plus b all squared minus 2ab yeah so if you can remember that result it's like the sum of two squares um, in a way rather than the difference of two squares so that's a useful result right now now we can just replace our alpha plus beta um, with what did we have 5 over 2 so what we've got is 5 over 2 all squared minus 2 lots of the product which is negative 2 right so that's 25 over 4 plus 2 and then if we um, add those together 25 over 4 uh, 2 is the same as um, 8 over 4 Actually, let me go back a step I've just realized I have left out it's 2 alpha beta so what I should have done is put a 2 here 
I'm probably screaming at the screen thinking, sir, why haven't you put a two in? That two I missed out, so let's put that back in. So that's negative two there, that's gonna change it completely. So that'd be 25 over four plus four. Okay, so 25 over four. Four is the same as 16 over four. So we get 41 over four. Okay, sorry about that error there. Right, so let me just highlight the answers. Five over two, negative two, negative five over four, 41 over four. And don't be like me and forget to put that two in like I did. All right, the roots of an equation are here. Find into integer values for A, B, and C. Now we're gonna use a little trick here to um, make this a bit easier. The problem is going to be is that yes I can write an expression for alpha plus beta which I know is equal to negative b over a and I can write an expression for alpha times beta which is going to be c over a but I'm, I'm only going to be able to get two equations but I've got three unknowns. I can make it and force this to have only two unknowns by taking this dividing everything by a and get an equivalent quadratic which is a squared plus b over a x plus c over a equals zero now can you see by doing it like that so you see over a here c over a here can you see B over A here, B over A here with the minus sign. Yeah, very similar to some of the stuff we were doing with uh, the roots of complex numbers. Very similar indeed. Now, um, then we can easily find out what those coefficients are and then we can multiply up to turn A, B and C into whole numbers. Okay, and that will save us some work. So that's the trick. Divide it down to make the coefficient of the x squared zero. Okay, so make coefficient of x squared not equal to zero, equal to one by dividing through by a. So obviously zero divided by a is still zero. Right, so let's put these numbers in and see what we get. So alpha plus beta is going to be negative three over two negative 3 over 2 plus beta which is 5 over 4 that's going to equal negative b over a so negative 3 over 2 plus 5 over 4 is negative a quarter so we've got negative a quarter negative a quarter equals negative b over a so that gives us uh, b over a equals a quarter. Right, we're not going to do anything else to that. We're going to leave it like that because that can just be slapped straight in to where it's highlighted in green. Alpha times beta, well, that is negative 3 over 2 times by 5 over 4. That equals c over a. Now, I can't cross cancel, so I get uh, c over a equals negative 15 over 8 and again i'm not going to rearrange that i'm going to slap that straight into the quadratic where i have is highlighting orange so what do i get it i will then get this quadratic x squared plus b over a which is a quarter a quarter x plus c over a well that's actually going to be minus 15 over 8 equals zero and it says that the coefficients need to be integers. They need to be whole numbers. So what I'm going to do is just times everything through by 8. That will turn everything into a whole number. So that will give me 8x squared. 8 times a quarter, well, that's 2, so 2x. And 15 over 8 times by 8 is uh, 15.
Okay, so there we go. I have found that quadratic. So A is 8, B is 2, C is negative 15. Okay, you should now be able to do exercise 2A on pages 56 to 57 of the textbook.